Hello everyone, this is Orhan. In this video, I will be talking about importing data from Excel or CSV files and how to clean them. Let's start. I will basically be importing this Excel sheet to Python. So this Excel sheet contains, as you can see, one, two, three, four stocks and one S&P 500 index. The date starts from October 2013 all the way down to October 13, 2023. This is daily stock price percentage returns. What we are going to do is to import this data to Python and then organize the data and then do some data analysis on Python. Okay, to do this, first of all, we have to open a, a py empty Python file. So this is going to be the folder that I will be using. So here I go to new as always and then create a Python file, empty Python file. So this is going to be the file that I will be using. And I'm going to name this file as two underscore importing data. In order to import data, we have to use a library called Pandas. Pandas is a software library written for Python for data manipulation and analysis. Right here, import Pandas as PD. So this is going to be the library that we will be using throughout this class. First of all, I'm going to give a data frame name to the data that I'm going to import. The name I'm going to be using is returns underscore df. And this is going to be the code that I will be using. And here I have to write the specific name of the Excel file that I'm importing. So that Excel file is called stock returns. There is one thing that I should warn you here. The Python file that we created, which is importing data, and the Excel file, which is stack returns, they must be under the same folder. In this case, it's called my own codes, but it does not necessarily be this one, but they have to be under the same folder. Otherwise, you cannot import the data. This code is basically importing this data, stack returns XLX data, as returns underscore DF. If you are supposed to import CSV file, the code will be slightly different. I'm going to write this as a comment. Right now, we are not going to use it. Now, let's see how our data frame looks like. So returns underscore df dot head. And I'm going to write here five just to see the first five rows. So if you run this code, it will show you your data file. Remember, this is our Excel sheet whose name is stock returns and Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM and S&P 500 indexes are here. They are all imported. Now let's take a look at a couple of other functions that we can be using here. First of all, let's get some information about the data set. So it tells you that there are six rows here. The first one is date, it's date time, and then the other ones are float. So the columns are, the type of the columns are float, as you might remember, this is a data with decimals. There are other commands that we can use to take a look at our data. One of them is uh, describe. So we can use returns underscore df, and then we can pick a column. I'm going to pick apple column, giving you basic statistical information about that column. Count, mean, standard deviation, maximum, etc. You can do the same thing for the whole data frame. So you would have information about all the columns. You can also see the returns, uh, average returns of these stocks. For example, Apple is 0.1%. Amazon is a little smaller. Microsoft is even smaller. IBM uh, seems to be the smallest on average. If you have a very big data, you might want to see the columns. So in this case, returns df dot columns will show you the columns of, of your data sheet. Now let's take a look at accessing subsets of data. How can we divide the data into subsets and how can we access them? In Python, it is useful to use slices of data frames or lists. A slice returns an object usually containing a portion of a sequence, such as subsets of rows or columns from a data frame. So we will basically be using two methods to access rows in a data frame log loc and i log i loc let me give an example 
if you want to see the first four rows of data frame, you can use this command, loc command. We tend to start counting things at one, but computers often start counting at zero. Python uses zero indexing, which means that indices start at zero, not at one. This is called zero-based indexing, and it happens all over Python. Indexing something with number one returns the value in the second position. So this command gives the first four rows of data. So if you run the code, you will see zero, which is first row, second row, third row, and fourth row. But if you want to use iLog command, you have to use zero, four, just because in the iLog, second index is exclusive. So if you run this, you'll get the same exact thing. Once again, second index is inclusive here with lock and second index is exclusive here with iLock. Now let's take a look at one specific column. Let's pick, for example, Amazon. If you run this command, it will give you the first 10 rows of Amazon. You can run the same command as follows. So the order is not important it will give you the same exact thing. Or one other option would be, they are all same thing. If you want to see the fifth row of the first three columns, you can use the following command. This part will give you the fifth row. So this is for the row part and this is for the column part. And it will give you the first three columns of the uh, fifth row. If you run this, you will have this. So if you increase, for example, the columns, the third column, you can add the fourth column. So it, it depends. So now let's change it to um, third column again, but you can increase the rows this time. So this is again, this part is for rows, this part is for columns. Use PD concat method if you want to combine non-consecutive columns into a new data frame. So the axis argument specifies the dimension along which the concatenation happens. Zero is for rows and one is for columns. So for example, when you run this command, it will combine two columns. It's basically combining six row of the first and second column and six row of fifth column. So you can increase this, so you can add a uh, fifth column too. So it will say SMP, SPX will be here too. But to specify a column, it is best to use the column's name itself. For example, um, if you want to see the Microsoft returns it will give you the Microsoft column. You can take some portion of it if you want from here to here. So you'll get from the row 20 to 30. In other words, from uh, 21st to 30th. Okay, now let's take a look at statistics of the column. Pandas provides a number of ways to access statistics of columns. For example, this command will give you number of rows of the Apple column. You can also uh, calculate the mean of this column as follows. As you can see, mean has uh, lots of decimals. If you want to decrease these decimals, you can just add here round um, three. For example, this will round it to three decimals. Now let's take a look at sampling. I use the sample method to retrieve a random sample of observations. Here, for example, we can sample 10 observations without replacement. So these are 10 random rows from our data set. If, so let me summarize what we did in this class. We basically start with um, importing data. After we import data, we just analyze it as descriptive statistics. We sliced it and we reviewed how to access subsets of data. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed the class and hope to see you in the next videos.